Johnny Mac, breaking news on a Wednesday morning. Yeah, thanks, Howie. Doing in it typical right fashion, after, right, right after 365. As yeah. it always goes. Uh, they're going for it, Johnny Mac. James Bradbury, lockdown, one-year, $10 million deal. I'll kick it right to you. What is your thoughts? A uh, little bit surprised it happened this early. Uh, I thought, look, I said the one nail I hit was one year, 10 million. I think that would be yeah, the Eagles did. number. Um, and they were able to get it. So my concern is with Kansas City offer multiple years or Indianapolis, Las Vegas was in the mix as well. Uh, from reports out there, you wondered if they would go more than one year. And I thought that would take some time to sit out. You know, maybe James wants to come back in the division and, and play the New York Giants twice and kind of prove that uh, they made a mistake. And, you know, I think it makes a lot of sense from both sides. The Eagles obviously need another cornerback. They got one now. And he has the opportunity to hit free agency uh, next year again and get back to where he was as far as a contract. And the one thing, same thing with Steve Nelson, same thing. This is a better player, but what the Eagles could offer Steve Nelson is the ability to, to start play every down opposite Darius Slay. So you're going to have an opportunity to make some plays and then he can back, get back on, on, on the free agent market, make some money. And maybe Bradbury looked at it that way. And this is a good opportunity, but for the Eagles, yeah, man. I mean, no more. We're not ready, Xander Krause. Uh, this team is, this team is going for it, um, and and we'll see how it shakes out. A lot has to do with the quarterback's development. We we all understand that. Defensively, the excuses are are melting away. So we say. You know, Jalen Hurts doesn't have any more excuses. Nick Sirianni doesn't have more excuses when it comes to weapons. Well, now it's Jonathan Gannon. Hey, you got you you could use a safety, but everybody could use something. Um, you have enough to compete, and you should be able to compete. John, I use, I like to use the expression "cooking with gas." Howie Roseman is cooking with gas right now. I I mean, I'm looking at some of the things he has done as not just one particular move, but as a collective, this offseason is really coming together. The football team is really coming together. You just alluded to it, and it's it's how I preferred they do it all along. Load the team up if you believe in it. By the end of the year, we will all know. Jalen Hurts is your franchise guy. Sign him, or he's not, and we need to get someone to rent, you know, better quarterback in front of these playmakers. The team is built now. I mean, you just added CB2. This team looks good on paper. Team looks real good on paper. I mean, this is the best duo of cornerbacks they've had in a very long time. You have an all pro level corner in Darius Slay. You have James Bradbury, who's everything the Eagles look for as far as the length. You know, he's six foot one, two twelve. He's got the size. He's a he's a good zone corner, so the Eagles can do a lot of that. He was a top ten corner last year, not twenty twenty one, but twenty twenty, the previous year. Um <laughs> you talk about the the front seven, the most talent they've had at linebacker in years. When you add Nicobe Dean and Kaiser White to that room, um, the defensive line with Jordan Davis and Brandon Graham returning, Fletcher Cox are able to work out a deal. Uh, they got tremendous depth up front. Um, yeah, as I said, Anthony Harris and Marcus Epps, you'd probably like a little bit more back there. But, look, every team in this league has You're issues. Right. And, and and when you start talking about, well, we could use a better safety, you know, you're you're starting to feel pretty, pretty good about what you have everywhere else. And that's a, that's a good sign. And, you know, let's be honest too, Xander, all that Zach McPherson, Tay Gallon, uh, Carrie Vincent Jr., that was all lip service. I mean Well, I look at that similar to the Quez Watkins. They 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 might they might actually believe in those players, but let them duke it out for, for cornerback three. Oh yeah. I yeah, I, I mean they right. There's no, you know, we're we're going into this with, with right. Zach McPherson. Same thing with Quez Watkins as the and that's a good comp as as the wide receiver too. There was no way that was gonna happen. Right. So 
could they develop? Yeah. And, and it'll be great. I mean, James Bradbury is only here for a year. Remember that. So, um, and if he plays well, then you have to start making difficult decisions. But that's for, you know, down the road. Right now, Darius Slade, James Bradbury, Avante Maddox. When's the last time you could say the Eagles had one of the best cornerback trios in the NFL? Because uh, they do right now on paper. And like you just laid out, it's not just a secondary. It's not just the defensive line. It's not just the offensive line anymore. I mean, every team has their issues in the NFL. That's an obvious, like you just said. I don't know if many other teams have checked as many boxes. Like we said, on paper, it's May 18th. we got a long way to go until we're in pads and we're hitting people. But I don't know if there's any other team on paper that has checked as many boxes as Howie Roseman has this offseason. I mean, we went from – a great team three years ago, but everyone talked about how we were the oldest average roster in the league. All of a sudden, we are like infused with young talent all across the board. And it's not just, like I said, in one spot. It's all across the roster. Yeah, and the one thing about Howie is he's, he's very disciplined. So, you know, if, if, if it did go to three years and $30 million, you know, James Bradbury probably wouldn't be here. So, right. you know. Jody, God love him, my partner on Birds 365, always wants to jump in the deep end of the pool. You know, give this guy this, give this guy that, give Boston Scott the tender. You don't have to. Right. And if you don't have to, you don't, you know, don't do it because then it affects other moves down, down, down the line. So that's what Howie does very well. He's got a beat on, on the league as a whole. He's able to wait things out. Sometimes it doesn't work, but a lot of times it does work. And if you look at, you know, the temperature of this fan base, Xander, after the first 10 days of free agency, oh, this team's terrible. They didn't get this. They didn't get that. They didn't get that. And how he preaches patience and all of a sudden, here's A.J. Brown. All of a sudden, you know, here's Jordan Davis. Now you got James Bradbury. You can't leave out Hassan Reddick. I mean, he's a player. No, Hassan Reddick, Kaiser White. I mean, there's a guy who one year cost effective deal. So, um, yeah, discipline is important in this league. And the Eagles are, I use that term a lot. You've heard me say it a lot, Sander. They're very disciplined and they generally make good decisions. They make great business decisions. And that's another credit to Howie. I know a lot of people knock him at times when it comes to the football evaluation of things, which is fair. He's had his misses and, and there's, there, there's problems there. But I mean, you talk about this a lot when it comes to the, the business side of this, Howie Roseman has it down to a T and you, and you floated the deal. You know, if it was three years, 30, maybe they don't get them. But would we have been upset if, if they didn't shell out three years, 30, you know, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure Howie had a line that he didn't want to go past. He didn't go past it and he got the deal done. It's cost effective. It works for everyone. John, I want to switch gears though. We finish a reaction. What does this do for the defense? Give our viewers a little bit of an insight. You add now James Bradbury across from Darius Slay. I know the safety people are still worried about that. This defense looks really good. Lay it out for us how it looks right now to the eye. Yeah, I think, you know, one of the important parts, the most important part is the front and improving not only the pass rush, but improving, that's the sexy part of it. And that's where Hassan Reddick comes in right. and, and Brandon Graham returning and all that. But <clears throat> the Eagles were really bad defending the run last year. Um, and they needed to bring safeties down. They needed extra bodies and run support. And that creates, you know, third and shorts. The, the, the whole thought process of of Jonathan Gannon's defense is, you know, third and seven, third and eight, third and nine, even better, third and behind the sticks here, third and 12. Um, All of a sudden, then you can do some different things. So that's where the Jordan Davis part of it comes in. With him as the the big run stopper, you shouldn't have to dedicate extra bodies uh, to stopping the run. And that means you're facing more third and longs and third and longs. You can get uh, more creative. You can blitz more. Uh, You can play combination coverages. You could have Darius Slay being a man guy. You could have James Bradbury being his own guy. 
uh, you can mix and match on, on, on different things. And you can protect those safeties. You can have them playing right. single, you know, you know, cover two, cover three. Um, just a lot of options for Jonathan Gannon. And, you know, that's where I say, okay, now the heat's going to be on him as well because a lot of people would say, all right, Jonathan doesn't have the talent. And he probably didn't last year. It was fair. It wasn't a, an excuse. It was an explanation. No, you, you got everything you need now. You got everything you need. Two top tier corners, um, a bunch of linebackers. If TJ Edwards doesn't play like he did last year, you got Nicobe Dean. If Kaiser White doesn't play, you have TJ Edwards and Nicobe Dean. If he doesn't work out, Davion Taylor's still there. All the defensive linemen, people complaining about Derek Barnett. He's the fourth edge rusher, man. I mean, it, it's Josh Sweat, right, right. Hassan Reddick, uh, Brandon Graham, and then Derek Barnett. Maybe Derek Barnett is a disappointment when he's got to be a starter, but as a fourth edge rusher, that's pretty darn good. I look at that as another one of those decisions that we just talked about where it might not, your fans might react. It might not look that good at first, but how he made that move with, with clear thoughts in mind about where he wanted to be by May 18th. And that was Barnett that deep on the depth chart. And, and yeah. he's a solid rotational. I mean, that's a good um, fourth and, defensive and, end. Here, here's what we're talking about. On the edge, you have Hassan Reddick. You have Josh Sweat, Brandon Graham, Derek Barnett. Inside, you have uh, Jordan Davis, Javon Hargrave, Fletcher Cox, Milton Williams. You, you can throw a wave of eight sort of defensive linemen, whatever you want to call Hassan Reddick, an edge rusher. You can do a lot of things. You can play 3-4. You can play five-man fronts. You can play traditional 4-3. They're going to be a nickel most of the time. They have a top-10 nickel corner in Avante Maddox. I mean, it's set up on paper, but it's May. <laughs> so a lot of times we talk about how there's like the extremes. Maybe people are like, oh, my God, Howie Roseman nailed it, but it is May 18th. we got to let this team, you know, develop a little bit we got to let them come together and then the other side is you know how he needs to do a better job it almost feels like this isn't falling in the middle like you can be as objective on this team as you want this team did a lot of good things this offseason whether you're an Eagles fan or not whether you're a writer a reporter and a Cowboy fan I don't care you're looking at Howie Roseman's offseason and you're like hey if Jalen Hurts is mediocre they got a good team. Yeah, and that, you know, uh, you'll see uh, a lot of the Jalen Hurts for MVP odds coming yeah, down. Crazy, yep. Um, and people are looking for value, saying this could be a good team. Uh, they have all the weapons offensively. Now they have a good defense to go on top of it. Um, you know, same thing happened with Mitchell Trubisky a couple of years ago in Chicago. It didn't work out. People are looking for value. So, you know, will the Eagles be a, a, a borderline playoff team, one and done like they were last year, potentially, if Jalen Hurts doesn't improve? If he does improve, this team could be a significant playoff contender, especially in an NFC that has gotten worse in the off season, you still have the Rams. You still have Tampa because Tom's back. Um, you know, uh, Russell Wilson is out of the conference. There's been sort of a shift. The, the um, AFC is much more top heavy. So after you get by the Rams, Tampa Bay and Green Bay because of Aaron Rodgers, then you start talking about who's next. Why, why not the Eagles? I really think they could make that, that jump this year. And I alluded to it earlier. I don't think Jalen Hurts needs to be elite. It would be great if he could make a next step and get there. But, I mean, this is a good football team. And I want the John McMullen perspective. You're not a fan of this football team. You've been, a, you've been an objective reporter on the team for a long time. You look at Green Bay's. You look at Tampa Bay's. You look at some of the AFC powerhouses. Where does this team stack up against those? Because I think there's a lot of times people talk about tiers. Like, 
Last year, Eagles were a playoff team, but they were not a contender, and everyone no. knew that. Are they? Did they make that jump this year? Are they a contender? Um, I mentioned the three teams. I can't put them with those three teams in, in, until I see improved quarterback play. I mean, it's not all about the quarterback. You can go out and win a game. Um, Jimmy G, perfect. You know, Jimmy G beat the Packers because of special teams. Um, you know, but I always talk about it. To me, it's about increasing the margin for error. Look, you can go beat Aaron Rodgers. He he's only go got one Super Bowl. But I always say, Packers fans go into they're the most spoiled fan base in the country. I always say because they've had. Over 25 years, consecutive years of Hall of Fame quarterback play. Brett Favre right into Aaron Rodgers. That fan base goes into every week thinking they're going to win the game. And most weeks, they're right. (laughs) And even when they're wrong, they're right to think that they have a chance to win the game. And that's what a quarterback like Aaron Rodgers gives you. You have that comfort level. You know you're going to be significant. You know you're going to be a significant contender. And then people don't like that term luck. You need a lot of luck to win a Super Bowl. Um, that's just part of it. You got to stay healthy. You got to play well on a given Sunday. You can't have terrible special teams. All these things. Um, the Eagles are better than what they were last year, but to be in the conversation with the Rams and Matthew Stafford the Bucs and Tom Brady, the Packers and Aaron Rodgers. That For that, you need the, the high-level, top-tier quarterback play to be in that category. They're well, in that next level. Well, they're almost there. So, Jalen, it's all on Jalen Hurts like everyone's alluding to. I think that's a good thing. I think that's the kind of kid, the kind of man, human that Jalen Hurts is. If you don't create this circumstance, I don't – you know. I think it's a good thing for him. I think pushing him is the right way to treat a guy like him. He's a very motivated guy. He's a very driven guy. Obviously, it's been widely reported, widely talked about in the city. I think it's the right thing to do. To It's all on you now, Jalen. And I think he know, he knows that. And part of me believes he's going to embrace that. And he's going to sink or swim. And I, I think he's going to swim. I think he's going to do. I think he's going to have a good year. Um, I think he's got, he had a good year last year. I, you know, one thing about Chandler Hurts, I always said, I always say, you know, it's very rare you have consistent improvement from year to year to year to year. You usually have ebbs and flows. Um, he has gotten better every single year, dating back to his days in college. Even when he got benched at Alabama, he improved that season. He improved as a player. Uh, You know, the standard is just so high at Alabama. Where you want to get, you know, and I always joked about Peyton Manning, who I always call the best regular season quarterback I've ever seen. And the reason I say that, and Aaron Rodgers kind of pushes him for this now, but the reason I would say that is Indianapolis and then Denver before he you know, he got a little bit too old. Um, They would go into every season saying, you know, a bad season, bad season, 11 wins, normal season, 12 or 13, good season, 14. This is when you're playing 16 games. You know, when you have that level of consistency, that's that's where you want to get at the quarterback position. We'll see if they can do it. I look at this as a good day for Eagles Nation. <laughs> they added James Bradbury to be cornerback too, across an already Pro Bowl caliber corner in Darius Slay, a name that's now flying under the radar, who we talked about a lot on Bird 365. Avante Maddox is now your cornerback three. He's a slot corner, but the defense looks really good. The offense looks really good. No excuses for anyone in the organization now. At, uh it's funny how Howie switched the tables. Everyone was mad at Howie. Now Howie did his job. Now everyone's going to be mad at the coaches and the players if they don't do their jobs. Yeah, that's how it works. And there's going to be hiccups. You know, it's not going to be perfect. Yeah, it's going to be. It's, it's May 18th. Be, yeah. Yeah. It's going to be a work in progress. And you always have to, you know, the NFL's about attrition. You have to have good health. 
And, you know, these all these high-level players have to stay healthy, um, which never happens for, for 17 games. So there's going to be a lot of hurdles, but the Eagles are, 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 are set up well. And that's, you know, as we call it, how we season kind of morphs into Nick's season. Um, how he's how we has set up Nick. Yeah, how he's definitely done a nice job. I got to give credit where it's due because I beat up on him, you know, personally. With I'm a fan of the Eagles. I talk about the Eagles all the time, just like everyone else does. I've I've been critical of what he's done to build around the quarterback, and I think he's done just done a really really good job all around. Don't forget to like the show, everyone. A lot of people on here watching signing James Bradbury is a big deal. I think that warrants a like on the show. John, thanks so much for your report. You rushed back. From the road, yeah, on I was, your way I to, was the going to the Nova to get to the Eagle Faithful so that we could yeah. deliver a report on James Bradbury. Thank you, sir, for doing that. Great job by you. Uh, go ahead on down there to the Nova Care Complex. All right, thanks, Andrew. Got it.